Ciao e tutti, e Jen de Vine Styles. Hey everybody, it's Jen from Vine Styles. Um, because we're not really able to travel too much these days, I thought that maybe we could uh, travel through Tewar and uh, go to the Piemonte region of Italy. Yeah, we're going to be trying a 2016 Barbaresco, and it's from Luca Bossio. So I'm really excited and I hope you guys are too. So we're looking at Northwestern Italy, right at the top there. Um, it's going to be the Piemonte region and more so it's actually going to be the Barbaresco denomination area. It's continental climate, meaning that it's going to have cold winters with mainly hot dry summers. Barbaresco is actually made from the Nebbiolo grape. This is going to be a softer, um, um, kind of a lighter style of a Barolo. Nebbiolo actually derives its name from Nebbia, meaning fog, which happens in the Longue area. Lots of rolling hills there, and so the fog just kind of comes down and settles uh, into kind of the valley areas. The interesting thing about this is that it's the baby of Viognier, which is a white grape, and Frisia, which is an indigenous, very tannic black grape in Italy and especially that Longue area. The Barbaresco uh, DOCG, so DOC is a denomination of origin, contr uh, controllata uh, area. DOCG is basically that but guaranteed as well. So that's what that G is. So it guarantees a certain quality of wine from those certain areas. So these are very terroir driven wines as well. Okay, so we start off with a little bit of family history because it's really important to the winemaker. So we're looking at actually a three generation family right now, starting off in 1967 with Agidio and Angela uh, Bossio, where they bought the vineyard land and they started farming it. And they decided to work a very uh, fatiguing yet satisfying life working these vineyards and listening to the vines and trying to understand what they need. Later, they had their son, Walter, who is now the current owner, and he is joined by his wife, Rosella, and they're working as a, a route to the past and yet with an open mind. And now we get to Luca Bossio. And as you may know, that the winery is actually named Luca Bossio. Why? Because he is the future of this family and he's the future of this company. So Luca is the son of Walter and Rosella and he uh, just graduated from uh, Eonology. He brings in a wave of innovation and freshness to the winery and so they're starting to see a little bit different um, wines coming into their lineup now as well. So they offer a range of wines, everything from like an entry-level wine all the way to premium wines like the um, Barbaresco that we're going to be trying today. Let's talk about aging because aging tends to be a really important thing, especially in this area. So for Barbaresco, because we're going to be kind of a lighter, slightly easier drinking style of a bar Barolo, they are one year less. This wine has to have at least two years of aging. For Reserva, they tend to have four years with about one year in oak. But Jen, why do they age? What's the point of aging? What does aging do to a wine? Aging, especially oak aging, allows a slow oxidation of wine. And what this does is stabilizes the wine and it also helps polymerize the rest of the tannins. So it helps round out and smooth out tannins and it marries flavors together so that it's a little bit smoother and it cuts that acidity in fresher, newer styles of wine. As I'm opening this up, I'm also going to just quickly tell you what I'm gonna do next. I'm actually not going to do a full tasting right away. I'm going to actually decant this wine. And why do we decant? Um, it is to allow the wine to open up and to breathe a little. You're going to want to decant it for about two hours, right, to open up. And the way how I decant, if you wanna see, is that I'm actually pouring it against the other side of the decanter because you want to allow as much oxygen exposure as you're pouring it. It's a 
very fine art. Yay! Decanting a fancy schmancy wine. We're going to let this decant, but let's do a quick tiny little tasting so I can just let you know what it smells like. So this is before decanting, okay? Right from the beginning, I get a lot of red fruit, kind of like a macerated strawberry jam almost, with some leather and some floral on there as well. It's almost um, kind of like a strawberry candy note to it. I'll see you guys in uh, two hours. Hey, we're back. Okay, so it's been two hours now that uh, this wine has been decanting and um, we're about to do our tasting. Uh, it's pretty pale. I can tell from here, like I can see almost through it even on my computer screen. Wow, okay. Oh, it's so cool. Okay, this is why decanting is perfect. Okay, so now I'm getting less of the candied strawberries. Um, and I'm getting more of a potpourri note to it. I still get a lot of that ripe red fruit on there. Um, strawberry, raspberry, a little bit of um, cranberry on there. But I'm getting a little bit more of that potpourri and rose. And now I'm starting to get more of a salty cured meat note to it. Um, there's more leather. Yeah, it's like a, like a comfy old leather couch. <laughs> something that just kind of brings you comfort. Uh, a sweet tobacco note to it, or even kind of like a tar. So it's a little bit more earthy, a little bit more developed, and it's definitely more complex. Full of different level types of aromas. Now I'm getting a licorice aroma, some cocoa notes in there, some toast and spice and earth and mushrooms. It just, it's so complex, it is so complex. It is so typical Nebbiolo. It has this high acidity, medium plus to high tannin structure, like a firm velvety tannin structure. The acidity really helps lubricate your palate so it doesn't get so like puckery from the tannins. And yet it's not super, super thick or viscous either. It has a little bit of a glycerol body to it, I'm noticing. Um, but I would say it's more on the medium level of um, body. And then as I'm tasting it, I am definitely get more salinity on there. So more of that cured meat note and a lot more of those savory type of notes too. So I'm getting more of that olive, mushroom, earth. And then you for the, the fruit notes, it's a little bit more of like a dried cranberry. It's so good. Oh my god. Woo. Outstanding, guys. Cheers. Okay, now that we've done the tasting, what would I pair this with? What grows together goes together, right? And so the first thing that comes out of my mind is truffles, right? And I would go for a mushroom risotto or truffle mushroom risotto. Meat, like red meat, kind of like a brasato, um, or like the Lombardi special of Osobuco, uh, which is just a veal shank, um, or I could go for duck sausage. I would go for glazed root vegetables, a polenta as well, and in Romania it's called momalega. And then I would go for a, a, like a variety of like cheeses, pecorino, burrata, we could throw in a manchego in there, um, and some prosciutto and olives, it's just... Uh, okay, that's the tasting. Oh my god, we went from this bottle, threw it in a decanter, and then threw it in my glass, and it's heaven. Like, it's heaven. It's so good. It's so good. 20% off three packs, and um, we hope that you guys take advantage of it. It's only going to be available until October 30th. Come and hit us up. Come check us out at Vine Styles, and um, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye. Take care.